Welcome, my friends, to the Happiness Breakthrough, where resilience, mindset, and excellence converge. Join us, Dr. Mark and Becky Leonard, high school sweethearts turned entrepreneurs, as we share powerful stories and practical tips to elevate your life. From overcoming life's toughest trials to mastering mindset and relationships, every episode is a journey towards your happiest, most fulfilled self. Tune in and transform your life with real, actionable wisdom. We come to you from gorgeous Hawaii. This place is, of course, a little bit of heaven on earth, and we absolutely love it here. Who doesn't, right? Funny thing, though, do you guys find that maybe when you go on vacation and everything is hunky-dory and all love? Oh. And hugs and kisses and, you know, good makeout sessions and whatever, but then you get back home and you're back to quarreling. Oh, the spark is gone. <laughs> or may, it's maybe even a worse sign if you come on vacation and then you have what happened to this, this couple that we saw the other day. It was so sad. We were, we were touring all the beaches on this island. We did the whole trip twice. And on one of the beaches that we stopped at, we're looking over this incredible expanse and the waves are breaking and the sun is shining and you can hear the the birds and the waves and the ocean and all the beautiful sounds and it's just this glorious moment and there's this couple that gets out of the car and she starts looking at this beautiful expanse and her husband takes a call oh to boy. close a deal the, <laughs> i'm just sorry the look on her face when he answered the phone i suspect they did not have a conversation about that ahead of time like hey babe i might have to answer this call and he definitely didn't have a conversation with the person he was doing business with hey i'm in this most glorious place with my wife i should probably do this call later <laughs> now for those of you that are watching us on our youtube channel you're probably going yeah, right. That's a little hypocritical, don't you think? Because aren't you standing right on the beach and actually hoping the water? I checked the tide. It is going out and we're standing right at the edge. So I'm hoping yes. a big wave doesn't come and soak us. But if it does, it'll be great for video and posterity's <laughs> sake. However, it's not hypocritical because we've had some really, really purposeful conversations about what it looks like for us in our work anywhere and from any continent in the world mentality. Yeah, so here we are today and we wanted to chat with you about something that we have conversations about all the time and that is how to work together. Especially how to work together when, I don't know about you, but you tend to pick a business partner or a spouse that's your opposite, right? Okay, so if we're opposites and I'm the happiness dude, well, what what is that? To say? What does that say for you? I'm the I'm the go with the flow person. Oh, I like that. You really are. You really are a go with the flow type of a person. So, yeah, it's been interesting. Over many many years, we have worked together, and we have had some ups and downs, and we've had to learn a lot about how to work successfully so that one, our business is not impacted, but most importantly, so our marriage is not impacted. I find that Mark and I think very differently. So I tend to be a black and white girl and he tends to be a, what would be the opposite of black and white? I, I don't believe in black and white. <laughs> I believe that the world is colorful, creative and artistic oh. and therefore, <laughs> I? No, I know you do. I, this is terrible. I don't want it to sound like you're not that way because you really are. But I definitely look at the world as this world of possibilities and you, uh, you do as well. However, what I love about it is you help ground me because I can get stratospheric very, very quickly. I can just get really excited and go for something and you're, and I don't really know if I like the term black and white because it makes it sound like it's right and wrong and I don't think that's the case at all. 
I think really what we tend to have is you help ground me and I help pull you up. And I would rather say you're more of a realist and I'm more of an optimist to a fault. Okay, okay, so there it is. I think that those two types of thinking, when we get into planning our sessions, tend to be a bit of a struggle because I'm thinking kind of concrete about things and Mark's thinking at a very like sur surreal. Conceptual. Conceptual world. And so then we find that there can be some contention as we try to work through things and we know that we've come to the right thing that we're going to do next when we are aligned. So we have to talk about it, but in the talking about it until we get to the point of alignment is some hard things. You know, it is hard and we'll just to really pull the covers back and let you kind of see how we work together. It was hard even yesterday as we were doing a planning session for different projects and products that we're creating, you and I saw things differently. And with my very, very lofty stratospheric, get very excited about the possibility of things, I don't think about the minutia in the details. In fact, I can't stand details. She'll say things that very often in our marriage, well, didn't you read the email? <laughs> and my response is more times than not, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I didn't, someone emailed us? I just didn't even see it. Yes, I'm, I am very detail oriented. And, and so that detail, getting into those details can make him feel sometimes like I'm squashing his dreaming. And likewise, sometimes when he's going off in this direction and I feel like it's, I'm not getting enough attention with the things that I feel matter, right? So how do we work through that, you guys? Because I suspect, I don't know, all the couples that I know tend to be opposites. So there tends to be a free spirit and a, and a more detail-oriented person, right? And how do how do they work through it? How do we work through it? And it, this really goes to that question that so many people ask us, and that is, how do you work with your spouse? I feel like I would kill my spouse if we work together. Yeah. And we don't, we make it work. And I think what we could do is offer a couple strategies of things that we do to help us. Uh, I can only speak from my perspective of things that we do. Uh, and I will use that very recent conversation that we had yesterday. I was getting very excited about is actually a podcast episode <laughs> and I was saying oh what if we did this what if we did that oh wouldn't it be great if and then you would bring these great deep questions and I found myself getting upset with you because I felt like you were actually questioning me questioning my creativity questioning the expertise that I have in the field from which we were going to present the podcast topic on. So I was viewing you as, I'll use a term from a book, The Power of Ted, a persecutor. You were persecuting me. Right. Not my intent. And in all honesty, we actually recorded the podcast and then felt like it didn't go well because we hadn't had the conversation before we did the podcast. He got irritated. I knew he was irritated. I got irritated. We tried to shove it aside, recorded the podcast, and then when it was all said and done, we were like, well, that was terrible. That was terrible. That was terrible. So lucky for us, we are at a beach and we took a long walk and we sat at the beach and we're silent for a while. And then figured out how to start talking about the things that we were feeling. And I think that that's probably tip number one is when you work with somebody that's your opposite when it comes to the way you're thinking you have to be willing to talk about the things that are uncomfortable i i actually started that conversation after sitting in silence for some while because we both needed that time to decompress from the environment we needed some time to pull away from the situation however we didn't pull away from each other. 
right. even though we were frustrated with each other, we walked the beach hand in hand in silence. And I wonder if anyone was watching us what they would think it looked like. It was like, oh boy, they're having a tiff. Or were, were they just going, oh, that's so cute. Uh, just a that, little romantic you know, stroll. Right. And it doesn't really matter what <laughs> other people were thinking. It was us taking a moment to just stay together and give, a, give each other space. And then the very first thing I said, and you already brought it up, was, Becky, that was not my intent. And I had to really think through what my intent was. And actually, what it turned to for me was I was no longer frustrated with her. I was frustrated with me because I knew that she wasn't questioning Mark and my ideas. She was just processing. So I had to start to look at it from her lens. Tip number two. Look at it from each other's lenses. I think that we've spoken about, about this previously, just in communication. The same thing goes when you've got a business partner. You have to consider it from their perspective. And so you have to leave space for them to give their perspective. And then you have to listen instead of wanting to fix or wanting to give your rebuttal or your reasoning or to make whatever you did better you have to let that go and just give space for the other person being able to talk about how they're feeling and what their perspective of the situation is and also allowing the other person to have those feelings of me questioning and this would be tip number three i didn't want to question her feelings i could use a phrase that i really really love and i recently came across this book from an FBI negotiator mm. and talking about high stakes conversations oh, right. <laughs> as I was reading and studying from this Chris Voss who is that FBI negotiator he starts with a great question or statement of just simply it appears that you're really emotional about this it appears that you have a lot of strong feelings about that mm. tell me more See, now I could, I'm not questioning if she had emotion. I'm just letting her have the emotion and then let her express that emotion. Now, ironically, I didn't have that question yesterday. She had it with me and allowed me the space to talk through it. Okay, so the three tips were to have the hard conversation because you guys see differently, you know that you're going to have to talk about the hard things and come into alignment for whatever it is that you're working on. Tip number two was give each other space, but don't leave each other space. And I think that's really, really important to allow each other to sit in silence for a moment or to process how the other person processes. I probably could have had the conversation quicker However, I knew that I was in a heightened emotional state. So I didn't want to have that conversation right then. I needed to give us both some time, but we did not leave each other. We sat with that for a few moments. And then tip number three. Is allow the space for their feelings and their perspective. And allow them to talk about the things that they're struggling with without fixing it without trying to justify your perspective, just al allowing them to have their own perspective and to talk about that and to feel that, to feel those feelings. It's their perspective and that's okay. So. There's a lot of things that we would love to share about how we work together. And we've got so many stories. We have the dish story, we have the laundry story, we have uh, we have stories about even how we park the car and where we leave things. And by the way, the best gift Becky ever gave my ADHD brain, do you know what it was? The drawer. The drawer. <laughs> she knew how I processed. So she created a little drawer for my keys and my wallet so I wouldn't lose them all over the house. I think that when you're working with your business partner, with your spouse, whoever that is, you need to recognize that you both came into this partnership 
with different strengths and different weaknesses. And being able to recognize those strengths and weaknesses and being willing to allow the other person to do their thing and you're not going to micromanage all of the things that are their things and they're not going to micromanage all the things that are your things. That you're going to let things go in order to work better together. I know that seems counterintuitive, but you trusted each other to begin with in order to work with each other. So now trust them to do the thing that they're good at and they need to trust you to do the thing that you're good at. And that way you have a better partnership together. But there's some things that you gotta do together. Absolutely. You gotta work through it. You, you do have to work through it. And Even I, in paradise. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's okay to have difficult conversations. Uh, 33 years of marriage and we still are learning how to communicate more effectively with each other. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I have really learned over this 33 years is playing to each other's strengths. If if we need some big crazy idea or a cheerleader or a don't worry we'll figure it out mentality, we definitely utilize my strengths. If we want to know how to get that done, process, we have to have Becky. Yeah. So the they work they work together. They do work together. And then the craziest part is when we actually flip flop roles. That's weird. That is so weird. And it's happened a few times. It does happen. It's it's, it's like after you've slept on the same side of the bed for 20 years, if you move your room and you're like, I'm gonna sleep on the other side, it's that type of uncomfortable. And when you recognize it, you go, what just happened here? <laughs> However, it's also really cool when we know each other well enough to start utilizing each other's skill sets in our own process. Uh, so working together is difficult. It's not easy. No. It, there, <laughs> there are it a lot. No. But it's rewarding. It's yes. so rewarding. And especially when you come from the perspective that you're going to make this work. I don't, it, I don't know. Sometimes I think in this world we live in, we've, we're giving up too easy now. Um, and there's value in the hardship that gets you to the other side where it's so beautiful. And so don't give up. Keep figuring out how to work through it. You know, one of the things that we're so excited about is next year we will be hosting a marriage retreat. And we've been going from place to place looking at where could we hold that. We've looked in Park City, we have looked in Sedona, and we have now looked here in Hawaii. Keep we your fingers crossed. Love to hear what you think, but I know which place I'm leaning towards. <laughs> Me too. Hawaii has my heart. It does. Uh, here there's something that's really magical about the islands and it's mm -hmm. this idea of Ohana. We are all family. And when you put that family first and when you treat other people like family, suddenly all of your relationships get much deeper. So your work relationship becomes Ohana. Your school, your church, your service, everything that you do can really become Ohana. And it's an important aspect to the success of our marriage is that when you come into our home, you are treated as if you are Ohana. So next year, Hawaii, marriage retreat. We, should we call it marriage retreat or should we call it partnership retreat? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna work through the rest of the details. We'll keep you posted, but you as our ohana are invited next year to our retreat and we cannot wait to host that it'll be a two-day event and you are going to love it. it we are going to teach you the principles of a strong marriage and how to especially work together something that we've been doing for a long time and we've learned a lot of lessons from okay so y'all my friends our it's ohana this is a short one but we really wanted to share this with you because we felt it was impactful because it was impactful to us just yesterday having that conversation and i'm sure some of you are having those same conversations in your home today yeah of how do we work together or maybe you just had a little, little fight yeah. and you need some help with working together so we're here for you we we go much deeper into understanding communication in mark's uh coaching yes so if that is something that if you guys are needing some help 
we can do that for you. Just check us out on thehappinessbreakthrough.com. And maybe we should just like step aside and say like, ah. Uh, wait, wait, I think we need to do this. Uh, Here we go, okay. So from our Ohana to yours, mahalo.